Mr. Basher, you're now recognized for five minutes. Chairman Barr, Ranking Member Foster, and members of the subcommittee, thank you for the invitation to testify today. My name is Brian Basher, and I am the Director of Financial Policy at Americans for Tax Reform. ATR is a nonprofit 501c4 taxpayer advocacy organization that opposes all tax increases and supports limited government free market policies. In support of these goals, ATR opposes heavy regulation and taxation of financial services. ATR was founded in 1985 at the request of President Ronald Reagan. I'm here today to talk about the proposed bank capital rule, which is based off the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision's Basel III in-game framework. In November, the subcommittee discussed how the Basel Committee, among other international organizations, has directly influenced U.S. banking regulation. Now, the discussion will specifically revolve around a proposal that circumvents congressional intent, abuses regulators' discretion, and is arbitrary and capricious. The Federal Reserve, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, Office of the Controller of the Currency are proposing to heighten regulations on banks with at least $100 billion in consolidated assets. The proposal would force large banks to build up more capital through retained earnings and additional stock issuances without any input from Congress. These new rules will make borrowing more expensive, hamper dividends and share repurchases, and reduce the availability of credit cards and mortgage loans. Activities and services the government should not be micromanaging. Banks should remain private and not regulated to such an extent that they resemble heavily regulated utilities or other, other quasi-governmental entities. The Basel Committee's influence on banking regulation across the globe has created a regulatory structure that circumvents Congress. This is evidenced by the proposal's direct repudiation of the Bipartisan Economic Growth, Regulatory Relief, and Consumer Protection Act. Congress passed this legislation with the intent to tailor regulation for bank holding companies. The proposal eliminates and replaces the tailored regulation from S-2155 by applying uniform regulations to all banks with more than $100 billion in assets. For example, the proposal expands the inclusion of accumulated other comprehensive income for available for sale securities to capital calculations for Category 3 and 4 banks. Category 3 and 4 banks would also be required to ca calculate their capital based on both the new expanded risk-based approach and the existing standardized approach, and then measure the compliance based on the more stringent of the two ratios. The supplementary leverage ratio and the countercyclical capital buffer would also be expanded to apply to Category 4 banks. The proposal also largely eliminates the use of banks' internal models without any empirical analysis justifying this prohibition. The blanket application of these requirements defeats the purpose of S-2155. This proposal is arbitrary and capricious, an abuse of discretion, and exceeds the statutory bounds with which the regulators are supposed to operate. Regulators may not expand their authority merely because they believe their preferred approach would be better policy. The regulators have claim to have broad statutory authority to amend capital requirements at will. However, Congress does not alter the fundamental details of a regulatory scheme in vague terms or ancillary provisions. It does not, one might say, hide elephants in mouse holes. Congress made it clear in S-2155 that there needs to be a regulatory structure that is best tailored to banks with different services and operations. The proposal dismisses Congress's intent and moves ahead anyway. Regulators are justifying the uniform application of capital requirements to banks in categories one through four by referring to recent events or the collapses of Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and First Republic Bank. However, these banks' failures cannot and should not be attributed to all U.S. banks with more than $100 billion in assets. The capital requirements dictated by the regulators have not been condoned by Congress and are arbitrary and capricious under the Administrative Procedure Act. The proposal is a classic example of the government intervening in the operations of private companies by mandating how they must organize their balance sheets. If finalized, the proposal has the potential to reduce the availability or increase the cost of credit for auto loans, credit cards, small business loans, and mortgages. One paper describes how the regulator's unbridled quest for more stringent capital requirements can make capital allocation more expensive. According to the paper, all else equal, making regulated banks less risky may actually raise their cost of capital with consequent implications for investment and growth. At the end of the day, major questions and policy decisions need to be left to Congress. Unelected bureaucrats should not be in the business of creating the law. Thank you again for inviting me to this hearing. I look forward to answering your questions.